So I just want to let everybody know who's struggling or going through a hard time right now that that's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you a better person. You might ask, how's my struggle going to make me a better person? Well, the struggle is to prepare you for the future or to show you something that you're not doing. There's a lot of beauty in the struggle. A bunch of people procrastinate because of it and evade their own greatness simply because they're in the wrong place at the wrong time or they place themselves around people who pump negativity in their head on top of all the negativity that they already soaked in growing up. Prime example, in my neighborhood, it was gangbangers, ballers, pimps, show-offs, and drug dealers. That's what I was around growing up. That's what I saw. So that's what I soaked in. How are you going to do good when there's no good around you? That's a good question, huh? Growing up, I was dealt a bad hand. Born to a teenage drug addict in a housing project in Watts. I never knew my father. I dropped out of high school, ran with hoodlums, built a long rap sheet that began with an arrest for burglary at the age of 14, which led to me cycling in and out of detention centers for petty crimes. When I was 15, I was walking home from a park late night, and a car pulled up on me with somebody hanging out the sunroof. Long story short, I was shot at six times. I was hit three out of the six. And what woke me up is the last bullet went right past my face, hit the wall, and pieces of concrete hit my face and got into my eye. It was a crazy situation, but I learned a lot from it. Enough to make me seek out guidance from counselors, mentors, my probation officer, and a college professor who actually cared about me because I was like a yo-yo the whole time they were working with me, straddling the fence. But I started to see that they really cared about me. At first I thought they just wanted to use me for their program, but they wanted to see me be somebody successful and not a product of my environment. I was on the verge of life in prison or chaos on the streets. But that group of people spent a lot of time working with me on my beliefs and my behavior, and they helped show me my self-worth. Because all I knew was that culture is the dysfunction that I grew up in. Changing my ways was one of the hardest things I think I ever had to do. I almost lost my life doing it. I had to change my friends, where I hung out, and most importantly, my ways. This was so hard because my so-called friends and homies from the hood turned on me because they thought I turned on them. It got to the point where I was getting into a fight or altercation just to get to a meeting or the program. They thought I turned on them because I stopped hanging out and going to hood functions and started to go to school board and legislative meetings. After I began to change my ways, I met up with the U.S. Attorney General and I even got a chance to meet President Obama and many others like Congress members, school board members, and plenty of celebrities and athletes. I work with a lot of groups and organizations getting certain bills and proposition passed. I got completely into youth advocacy and became a violence prevention counselor. I work getting certain bills and proposition passed such as Prop 47, the reduced penalties for some crime initiative, as well as school discipline policy and the LAUSD School Common Bill of Rights, which discourages suspension as a punishment, which means fewer kids out of school and fewer incarcerations. Shortly after those successes, I moved with my biological mother, who I found on Facebook, in another crazy area because I got a job at a Buffalo Wild Wings that one of my mentors owned. If the bus didn't come on time, the walk to the train was the worst. I had to deal with the fact that I was affiliated in an area where they don't like blacks or people that was from where I was from. One day when I made it to the train station, this guy gave me a look and it made me get on the next cart. When I got to my stop, I heard a gunshot. And that same person that gave me that look had just ended up shooting somebody on the train. And I already had been shot four times before that, and it was just like, it just blew my mind. I couldn't take it anymore. So I called my mentor, and I told him, like, how I felt. 
and I told him that I was ready to give up. And about a week later, I got a call saying, do you want to get out the situation you're in? And I told him, yes. I'm tired of coming home from long days at work, sleeping on the floor, waking up to roaches in my face, and doing it all over again the next day. He said, well, pack your bags and come outside. On the car ride to where we were going, he uplifted me like no other and explained to me that I was a diamond in the rough. Under the mentorship of Dr. Rinford Reese, I enrolled at Mount San Antonio College, and I took classes at Cal Poly Pomona University. He exposed me to the dynamics of a college campus. He got me out of that culture of dysfunction I was talking about so that I can breathe. Once I was able to breathe, I began to think. Once I began to think, I started to excel. He took me under his wing and created a roadmap to academic success. He helped me pay my rent for four months, kept me busy and out of trouble. In October 2015, five Roberson scholars and I were invited to Savannah, Georgia from Los Angeles, California to tell our stories at a community safety forum hosted by the Chatham County Juvenile Court. Local judges, law enforcement, school board members, and elected officials were blown away by the ideas and plans for concrete change that we gave that night. Before we left, one of the scholars and I decided to tour River Street. During the process, we met some local kids who were actually supposed to be attending the forum, exactly the kind who I hoped to reach with our message. And we followed them while having a conversation. Then they pulled out a gun and tried to kill us because we had nothing they could steal. I took two bullets to the arm and one to the back, which ripped into the vertebrae behind my heart. The prognosis was that I would never walk again. I stayed at Memorial Hospital for about a month and a half, and then I was transferred to the Shepherd's Brain and Spinal Center in Atlanta, where they helped me develop my emotional and physical stamina and independence. I learned a lot from the people and the stories there. Here's a quote by Martin Luther King. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. After I was shot, I decided to stay in Savannah because I didn't want to run from the problem, I wanted to run to it. And I knew by being proactive and sharing my own experiences in education, we can solve some of the problems that exist in the community. So while I was laying there in that hospital bed in rehab, me and Dr. Reese had a conversation, and somehow firefighters came up. And we was talking about how firefighters have to go into the fire to save a life, and if they don't, the person would die. And then I said, fire, I, I like that. And then we kind of broke fire down to forgiveness, introspection, respect, and education. And I turned fire into a program in Georgia that helps at-risk youth who's been traumatized, mischievous, made the wrong decision, wrong place, wrong time, incarcerated parents, or just trying to be something that they're not. The core theme values of FIRE are forgiveness, introspection, respect, and education. The motto is, we will not run from the fire, but we will run to it. Using FIRE as a metaphor for problems, instead of running away from the problems, we, don't want, we want to run to them. FIRE consists of a series of youth empowerment workshops that focus on conflict resolution, emotional intelligence, life skills, and communication skills. If we achieve our goal, then we will have safety, safe, safer and healthier communities, communities everywhere. Before I close, I would like to challenge everybody in this room who is going through a hard or negative time in their life to look at the situation in a different way. Reach out for help. Get yourself educated on what's going on and why. You might find out that you're living in a system or area or probably just hanging around people that are built for you to fail. Whatever it is, you need to find out so you can move forward with your life. And I'm gonna close with this quote by Martin Luther King. 
the true functions of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character. Those are the goals of true education. And I have learned on my 20-year journey that education is liberation. Thank you. It was a pleasure.